Hello, and welcome back to another installment of our season-long lecture series, Behind the Music, where we take an inside look at the music you'll hear on North Carolina Symphony programs. On tap for this weekend are gems for string orchestra, including works by Elgar, Grieg, George Walker, and Philip Glass, conducted by Timothy Myers. The symphony is excited to share this performance on Saturday, February 27th at 8 p.m. The program opens with Introduction in Allegro, composed in 1905 by English composer Edward Elgar. Elgar was at the height of his powers. His orchestral work, Enigma Variations, received wide acclaim a few years earlier, and fragments of his soon-to-be-composed First Symphony and his Violin Concerto were floating in his mind. In England at this time, there was in fact an overall renaissance occurring with English composers. Before Elgar, there were few English composers that could match the fame of European composers such as Mozart, Brahms, or Verdi. But with Elgar, as well as Rafe von Williams and Benjamin Britten, great English music was back. Now speaking of Enigma Variations, as you may recall about that piece, Every movement is dedicated to a friend of Elgar's, with each movement being a sort of musical portrait of that person. August Jaeger, the dedicatee of the movement subtitled Nimrod, pressed Elgar to compose a new piece of music for the recently established London Symphony Orchestra. Jaeger encouraged him to write a showpiece that would highlight the extraordinary talent of the string players of the London Symphony Orchestra. A talented violinist himself, Elgar agreed to the project and penned the introduction in Allegro. Now, you'll note a recurring theme on this program, and that is the shadow of the Baroque. It plays a part in this work, as well as in the works by Philip Glass and Edvard Grieg, but I'll get to those pieces in a bit. In Elgar's work, he chose to score the piece for string quartet and string orchestra, a nod to the Baroque Concerto Grosso that sets in relief soloists from a larger ensemble. A second aspect of the Baroque found in Elgar's music is the fugue. When we get to the Allegro section, we get a masterful display of virtuosity as the fugue works its way all around the orchestra. Now, as you listen to this work, I encourage you to listen to the depth of sound found in Elgar's music. Elgar was a master at orchestration, spreading musical lines around the ensemble at hand. You'll notice that in the string orchestra, there are multiple parts being played within a single instrument section. For example, if you're watching and listening to the cellos, you might catch moments when two or three of them are playing completely separate parts. This type of writing is a hallmark sound of Elgar, full, lush, captivating lines that interact brilliantly with all the other parts occurring at the same time. The music is passionate and highly charged. What an impressive way to open this program by the North Carolina Symphony. George Walker was a prolific composer and marvelous pianist whose career spanned over seven decades. As a student, he studied piano with Rudolf Zirkin at the Curtis Institute of Music, as well as chamber music with William Primrose and Gregor Piatigorsky, and composition with Rosario Scalero, teacher of Samuel Barber. He was awarded a Fulbright scholarship studying composition with Nadia Boulanger in Paris. George Walker was also a trailblazer, as he was the first black American to graduate from Curtis. He was the first black American to earn a doctorate from the Eastman School of Music, and he was the first black American to earn the Pulitzer Prize in Music in 1996 for his work for voice and orchestra, Lilac. His music has been performed by every major orchestra in the United States. The work featured on this program by the North Carolina Symphony is Walker's Lyric for Strings, composed in 1946. This piece, scored for string orchestra, is an adaptation of the second movement of his string quartet number no. one. The original title of this music was Lament. Walker composed it after the passing of his grandmother and to which the piece is dedicated. The music is subtle and airy at times, but there is also an ardent climax in the middle of the piece. I hope you enjoy the moments of melancholy heard in the music 
as well as those sincere moments of remembrance. Now there are a handful of composers and musicians working today or the recent past that defy labels. When you try to put them inside a box or categorize their music in one all-defining manner, you're most certain to leave them with short shrift. Do any come to mind for you? I think of people such as Leonard Bernstein, Igor Stravinsky, and even Dolly Parton. But for today's purposes, how do you describe a composer who has been working for over seven decades as a musician, who has collaborated with diverse artists such as David Bowie, Twyla Tharp, and Allen Ginsberg, who has composed hit soundtracks for films such as The Hours in Martin Scorsese's Kundun, but has also written 25 operas that continue to be performed in opera houses the world over, including the Metropolitan Opera. Did I also mention that this composer is credited with evolving the 20th century genre of music known as minimalism, though he would prefer to call it music with repetitive structures. Philip Glass is the composer of which I speak, whose artistry, innovations, and creativity has left an enduring legacy on the American musical landscape. This last aspect of Glass, minimalism, applies to the work being performed by the North Carolina Symphony. The piece of music is called Echoes and is derived from the word echo. The piece is scored for two solo violins and string orchestra and was written for violinist Edna Michelle and Yehundi Menuhin. Right from the start, you'll hear a soft, regular, pulsating rhythm from the solo violins that persists throughout the work. This repetitive pulsation with other gradual shifts in other aspects such as dynamics or harmony is a hallmark of minimalism. If you really tune into the music, you'll hear underneath the solo violins a descending harmonic line played by violas. This is a chaconne, the Baroque genre of music in which a harmony line repeats while music above it varies and changes over time in ways similar to a theme in variation. The two violin soloists at times play the chaconne line and other times melodic bits that are derived from it. Philip Glass intended for this music to be blissful and without agitation. I hope you can clear your mind as you listen to this fascinating music and let the music wash over you, invoking feelings of calm and serenity. The final work on the program is by Norway's greatest 19th century composer, Edvard Grieg. Over the course of his life, Grieg was influenced by a number of musical trends that later showed up in his music. In his early years, he was smitten with Romanticism, specifically the music of Robert Schumann. After meeting Richard Nordrak, a fellow composer who went on to write Norway's national anthem, Grieg found his true calling as a Romantic nationalist composer. He listened to and gathered about him folk songs from Norway's countryside and began to compose music that reflected the style and tradition. Grieg's greatest contribution to music was through his works for solo piano and for voice. These works are often about Norway's beautiful landscape, way of life, and of course, love. Now, if you are a fan of orchestral music and know of Grieg, then the music you're most likely familiar with are his piano concerto in A minor and the suites derived from his incidental music for Henrik Ibsen's play, Peer Gint. These are arguably his most famous works of music. But if we were to add a third piece to those two, it would most certainly be the work on this program, From Holberg's Time, also known as Holberg Suite. Danish poet-dramatist Ludwig Holberg, who lived from 1684 to 1754, brought renown to Scandinavia when his comedic plays became famous in Europe. For a time, Holberg lived in Edvard Grieg's hometown of Bergen, the 200th anniversary of Holberg's birth came in 1884, and the city of Bergen wanted to honor him with a celebration in music. They turned to their own famous composer, Grieg, to write music for the occasion. He composed two works, a cantata for male chorus and a Baroque-inspired dance suite for string orchestra, Holberg Suite. The suite is cast in five movements, all of which are in G major, save for one. 
And though there is, of course, a nod to the Baroque through employment of the dance forms, the music is wholly Grieg's. It is lush, romantic in emotion, and chock full of good melodies. The first movement is a prelude, which tumbles headlong from beginning to end with great swells of energy and fast moving scales. The second movement is a sarabond, slower and in a triple time meter. The third movement is an elegant gavotte with a musette central section. And this French inspired dance invokes the sound of bagpipes. Listen to the low strings for this color. The fourth movement is an air, less of a dance and more of a song. This is the one movement, not in G major, but G minor, a sort of brief stop in melancholy before we reach the fifth and final movement, a rigodon. This dance is at breakneck speed with a solo violin and solo viola taking the spotlight throughout. Think Norwegian fiddling. Thank you for joining me in this exploration of the music you'll hear in this weekend's performance. The concert streams on Saturday, February 27th at 8 p.m and will be available for 20 days following. Thank you for your support of the North Carolina Symphony and enjoy the performance.